Hi everyone, I hope you're really well. We have a naked face, which can only mean one thing. It's another foundation test video today. I feel like I have been dabbling in the world of drugstore foundation for a little while, so I thought I would go back to something a little bit more high end. And today I'll be testing the Becca Ultimate Coverage Complexion Cream. I think is its full title. I'm pretty excited about this one because I feel like I've heard lots of good things about it. I do quite a bit of research in terms of which foundation tests I want to do next. So I'm pretty excited about trying this. I've got a sample in the shade Porcelain, which when it arrived, I'm quite nervous about the colour because it is the lightest of the bunch, but this to me still seems quite dark and I'll just show you what I mean. It's actually picking up, if anything, a little bit lighter on camera, but it's actually really pink. And I do have pink undertones, which is why I went for this one, but I am quite nervous of the colour. But before we get into application or anything like that, let's just quickly pop onto the internet and just see what we can find out about this foundation before I pop any on my face. So the Becca Ultimate Coverage Complexion Cream will set you back £34 for a standard 30ml. So it's definitely within the higher end price tag. And it seems to come in a fairly decent shade selection too. It's described as being a full coverage foundation with a balance of uniquely high concentrations of pigment and water for maximum coverage in a weightless and breathable cream. So it's 21% pure pigment and 22% water. The idea behind this is you get maximum coverage without having a cakey look or feel to the makeup so it does sound pretty nice in that respect. It's clinically proven to give 24 hour coverage, is water resistant and transfer resistant. It also reckons that it's going to improve the appearance of your skin after 24 hours. So basically this is a foundation that you won't be able to detect you're wearing, it's waterproof, it won't transfer onto anything and it's basically going to make your skin look amazing. So sounds pretty good to me. In terms of application, obviously because it is highly pigmented you only need a small amount and they actually recommend that you apply this with a brush, but I prefer to experiment myself. Okay. So if you are new to my foundation test videos, I like to do two different application methods because these are the two methods that I generally use on a day-to-day -day basis and that is my Beauty Blender and my Zoeva 104. I do sometimes use fingers as well, but I think for the sake of an experiment like this, I will stick to using these two on each half of my face. My face is also freshly washed and moisturized, so it's all ready to go really. Okay, so I've just dipped my finger in. It does seem to be quite a thick cream, which I think given the name, you would expect. It's supposed to be very highly pigmented, so is supposed to be lightweight and good for very quick, easy to blend coverage. So I actually get really nervous about doing foundation test videos now because I do believe I've actually found my holy grail. So testing anything else just makes me really uneasy now, whereas before I used to get quite excited. But I suppose at least I have something to compare it to. Okay, well it certainly does blend pretty easy. I find with the Zoeva 104 it blends really nicely anyway, which is why I love it so much. I'm just conscious of the fact I don't want to use too much because they've said it's um, quite highly pigmented. Sorry for any background toddler related noise by the way. But yeah, I feel like I've watched a lot of videos on YouTube where people have raved about this, so it's been on my list of foundations to try for quite some time. I think the colour match isn't too bad actually. You can see it's evened everything out really nice. It's got a very strong scent to it. Very foundation-y scent. It reminds me of an Estee Lauder foundation actually, maybe double wear. But I think that's that side done. It feels quite nice, it's ever so slightly tacky but maybe that will dry down a bit. But on the whole it is pretty smooth. Right, let's go on to the other side of my face with the Beauty Blender. Didn't actually mention anything that's going on in my face right now, but I think you can probably see. I've got a bit of a healing spot here and I've got some scarring from some recent horrible spots. Just the, the same old, same old really. I've got some pigmentation on my forehead. I 
think from an ease of application point of view, I'm probably preferring the brush because it did just seem to be that bit quicker. And the Beauty Blender also does sheer out the coverage a little bit. But obviously if you've done your full face using the Beauty Blender, you wouldn't really notice that. But I feel like I'm having to put a little bit more on just to try and even things up a little bit whilst trying not to use too much. Okay, I think that's both sides of my face done. In terms of it being full coverage, I'm not sure I would necessarily agree with that. I don't really want to put too much more on because I'm worried that it's going to start to not look so good, but you can still see that I've got stuff peeking through. I've got some pigmentation still peeking through on both sides actually. Um, it does feel quite nice and it does feel very lightweight. I'm just going to try and do a little bit of spot concealing. Which one should we go for? Here. In fact, it's difficult to only pick up a small amount, so just try tapping it in with my finger. My kind of go-to day-to-day foundation application method at the moment is to put something on and briefly rub it in with my fingers and then finish it off with the Zoeva and I'm finding that to be like the quickest, nicest way. It has knocked things back a bit but you can definitely still see that they're there. So I'm not sure if I would agree that this is full coverage but what I will do is I will finish the rest of my makeup um, which will probably take a good 10 minutes or so and then I'll let you know how it's sitting and feeling and how all the other products I've used went on top of it because I definitely need concealer today, oh my gosh. Yes, definitely need some industrial strength concealer today and I will be back in a second and we'll see how it's looking. Okay, so there we go, that is the rest of my face done. Um, it still does feel a little tiny bit sticky in most places but it has dried down pretty well. Um, I'm a bit shiny but I... I'm avoiding using my setting powder even though I really want to use it because that stuff is just amazing. But this is a foundation test so I shall resist because I don't want to skew the results too much. Uh, likewise I don't use a primer, we just want to see how it performs on its own and then go from there if it's any better. I've gone as far as I'm going to with my makeup because I just stabbed myself in the eye or in the waterline rather. Don't we just love it when that happens? So I don't know how this side of my face is looking because I've just been kind of crying constantly out of that eye. I did a real number on myself, oh my goodness. Anyway, so in terms of how it's looking in real life, it has settled a little bit into pores. It does give a very nice natural finish, but I was expecting something a little bit more intense in terms of coverage because I can still see quite a lot peeking through and my least favourite part of my face to cover which is my chin I don't think is looking great but it's not looking really bad either so it could definitely be worse. It's not my favourite finish in the world, I think I have tried better things and because I am comparing everything to my L'Oreal Infallible Matte because that's just given me the finish and the coverage that I just so really want. I am comparing everything to that and I have to try and remember that this is its own foundation. But I think it looks nice. I think if you had pretty good skin and there wasn't much that you needed to cover, then it certainly does give a really nice finish and it was really nice and quick and easy to blend. And it feels really nice as well, it certainly feels lightweight. But I think it's looking quite nice. Anyway, I am running so late. I still need to film my daily advent calendar unboxing, so I'm going to do that in just a second and then we're off out to a Christmas party for my little boy. So I will see you again later at the end of the day when we see how this is worn and I'll give you my final thoughts. Hi everyone, it is later on in the afternoon. I have been wearing this foundation for just over seven hours, which is obviously not how long I would normally be wearing foundation. I would be wearing it a bit longer than this. But as I've still got some pretty good light outside, although, oh, this has been the worst day to do a foundation test. 
because it's been really misty and really drizzly all day so I kind of feel like my face has got quite damp when I went out today. I'm not sure if this has been the fairest test in the world but hey ho it is first impressions so I'm sure I will continue to try it and it will be hopefully better weather the next time. So yes whilst I've got some okay-ish light for the moment I thought I would check in with you now just so that you can see how things are looking so let's take the glasses off get you zoomed in a bit and we will check the situation out okay there we go apologies for how haggard I am probably looking like I said it's um not been the best day to do a foundation test today it's been really grotty weather but hey the weather in the UK isn't perfect so in that respect it's probably been the perfect day to test it really so let's have a look up close I do feel like I'm pretty shiny and you'll probably be able to see that particularly in my t-zone I'm sure that will have been improved had I have used a primer and a setting powder but obviously I didn't want to do that today I don't know whether you can see but where I've got some pores around my temples it's definitely sat and is gathered in pores there and it doesn't look particularly attractive. It's really worn off in some areas and hopefully you'll be able to see that, particularly my chin area. It does definitely feel like a very lightweight foundation. It's not felt too stifling and uncomfortable, so that's a big plus. It did say it was good for all skin types as well, which is always a comment that gets me a little bit concerned because you think how can you make something that's good for all skin types so yeah I'm not sure I would say that this would probably more suit your skin if it was normal to dry because it didn't feel like it was over drying it just felt like it was kind of moisturizing I suppose in a way it's not clung to dry patches at all not that I really have many but I don't feel like it's clung to any dry patches but yeah, it's just, it's just not looking fantastic around the chin area at all, really. It's really worn off. I don't think there's been a massive difference in between brush and beauty blender side. I think I probably would use a brush for this one, just purely because it was a bit quicker and it was nice and easy to blend. I usually reserve my beauty blender for if it's something that's a bit more tricky to blend. But it did blend really nicely and it did say that it would, so that's good. I don't instantly dislike it like I have done other foundations that I've tried. I am disappointed, I have to be honest, because it's a bit tricky when you read other people's reviews or you watch reviews on YouTube and people get really excited about it, particularly people with stuff to cover or people who have oily skin. I feel like they've all raved about it and in, in reality I don't think it's been that great really and hopefully it's translating on camera kind of how light the coverage has been. So I am happy to experiment with this one further. I think good primer, good setting powder and we'll see how it goes. It's just not giving me that level of coverage that I really want. I just want something that's kind of going to obliterate everything and although this sounded like it was going to do that, I just don't feel like it did. So it is very disappointing but it's not like some foundations I've tried where I've really hated it and I've just wanted to take it off straight away. It does feel very comfortable and it's only really my immediate T-zone that feels quite oily. Everywhere else just feels very comfortable and to be honest it just feels like I've got nothing on at all. It just feels like my own skin. Whether that's because it's actually all worn off in the rain and this is my own skin, I don't think it is. I. I'm sure when this comes to washing it off later I will see something different and I'll see lots of makeup. Oh I know what I could do actually let's get some blotting paper and we'll do some blotting and see if that feels any better and whether it improves the situation at all. Let's go get some blotting paper. Okay so the blotting paper I'm using at the moment is still this one from NYX because I don't tend to get through it all that quickly really. Let's have a little look see if this makes things any different and see if it transfers to, Ooh. so you can see I'm not that oily, it's not sticking really badly, so there's a little bit of oil there and I think a little bit of foundation has come off too, I always forget I've got these because my holy grail foundation that I use most days, the L'Oreal Infallible Matte, I just don't need to blot at all, my cheeks feel quite oily as well, so I'm trying to juggle 
checking I'm in view and holding a palette mirror and it's just all happening really. Oh that feels much nicer. Just a little bit tacky on the um, temples but forehead feels much nicer now. Right let's have a look see how much of it transferred. I don't know whether it's going to pick up very well at all. There's a little bit there but it's not too bad. Hopefully you'll be able to see that. But it's definitely improved things. I feel much nicer. I'll just show you how things are looking a little bit closer up. So hopefully you can see how things are sitting. Now that I've blotted after seven hours wear. And there we are back from a distance again. So yeah, I've not completely written this one off, but it has overall been a bit of a disappointment. I think when someone says something is highly pigmented and gives you full coverage, it really has to deliver. And I did feel like I struggled a bit to kind of build it up to that kind of full coverage, but maybe I'll experiment with it a little bit more and we'll see how I get on with it in future. So that is it for today's video. I hope you found it enjoyable and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up down below. I would really appreciate it. And if you've not seen my last video, I will put a link to it just here so you can go check that one out. And if you're not subscribed to the channel and you'd like to be, then I'll pop a button right here so you can also subscribe as well. And what that will do is just give you a notification as and when I upload new content for you to check it out. And it would be absolutely wonderful to have you. Anyway, I hope you're all really well and I will see you again soon. Bye.